morning and welcome to chapel. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. When the master called the servant in, you wicked servant, he said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servants just as I had on you? In his anger, the master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In our text for this morning, we hear of three different servants. Each of these different servants tells us something different about it, what it means to be a servant of God. Each of these servants, in each of these servants, we see how servants of God, are responsible to act in response to injustice. Their own injustice. Injustice perpetrated on them by others. And in response to the injustices perpetrated on others. When should we forgive? When should we submit? And when should we act? This passage begins with Peter asking, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy times seven. This parable is about proportionate forgiveness. Not forgiveness proportionate to what we deserve or what we ask for, but forgiveness proportionate to how we have been forgiven by God. Jesus explains that a king wanted to settle accounts with his servants. He had a man brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Now, 10,000 talents is an unimaginable debt. One talent is equal to 15 years' pay for a peasant in Judea. That would mean that 10,000 talents is equal to 150,000 years' pay. Or, in terms that we might understand today, if the federal minimum wage is 725, then 10,000 talents would be the equivalent of 2.5. 
billion dollars. This is a debt impossible for a servant to pay. And since he was not un since he was not able to pay, the servant fell on his knees before the king and begged, "Be patient with me, and I will pay back everything." This, of course, is a ridiculous request. He cannot pay. If he paid everything he had for the rest of his life, he still could not pay. If he started paying then and continued paying until today, he would still owe $2.23 billion. Now, in response to this ridiculous request, what does the king do? He takes pity on the servant, canceled the debt, and let him go. This servant's debt is like our debt before God. A debt so great it can never be repaid. And here is our first lesson. The servant of God has been forgiven an unending debt of sin. We, as servants of God, are called to forgive in proportion to how we have been forgiven. We have been forgiven an unending debt. There is no limit to our forgiveness of others who sin against us. This is the main message of this passage, and this is as far as most go. But there is more here for us. You see, when the first servant sees a second servant who owes him a hundred denarii, that's about six thousand dollars. He throws him into prison. Now, most people focus on the injustice of the first servant, which leads us back to the main theme of forgiving without limit. However, I'm interested in the second servant, the one who owes six thousand dollars, the one imprisoned unjustly. Remember, he is a servant of the king as well as the first. Now, all servants of God have been forgiven an unending debt. This debt was paid at an unimaginable cost in pain and suffering. So, how should the servant of God respond when treated unjustly, like the second servant? Does this servant object, or run, or even complain? No, he submits. The servant of God endures. The injustice, as Christ endured His suffering to pay our debt, and we have one more servant to look at. And this servant isn't just one servant, but it's the rest of the servants in our story. You see, when the other servants of the king see the unjust treatment of the second servant, they don't stand by. They don't say, "Well, it's none of our business." They don't say, "We'll pray for you." They act. They speak out against this injustice to the king. They don't leave it to one. They all act, and this is our third lesson: the servants of God, when witness to injustice against others, speak out. The servants of God do not remain on the sideline; do not remain silent. The servants of God act as one body, just as their master, our Lord, would have us act. You see, as servants of God, we live lives in response. We live in response to the unending debt we owed, and for which we have been. Forgiven, God forgave us. We are called to forgive. We live in response to the unimaginable suffering our Lord endured to pay that debt. Our Lord suffered for us, and we are called to suffer in His service. And we live 
in response to the everlasting love and justice of God for us and for the rest of his creation. God loved us so much that he himself paid the debt for our injustice. And we are called to stand against the injustice perpetrated on others he loves. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.